Number 60, calculate the concentration of all solute species in each of the following solutions of acids or bases. Assume that the ionization of water can be neglected and show that the change in the initial concentrations can be neglected as well. And then we have letter C. So in this case, we have to find the concentration of all solute species from a 0 0.0810 molarity HCN solution, which they told me was a weak acid. Okay, so if it's a weak acid and we're trying to find out concentration, we got to use a Ka value. A stands for acid, Ka. And we can only do this problem if we go in the back of the textbook to find out what the Ka value of HCN was, which was 4.9 times 10 to the negative 10th. Now remember, any Ka value is based off of a balanced equation. So the first thing is, is I got to write a balanced equation for HCN. Now since they did tell me that it was an acid, I can do a little trick. You can't do this trick with bases. So for acids, you just take your acid, HCN, and since this is a weak acid, I will write equilibrium yield signs both ways. And now you don't have to write plus water. The trick is that just separate the H from its ion because that's what it's going to dissociate into. So in this case, it would be H plus and CN minus. Now, all charged ions are always going to be aqueous. They're in the water, so AQ, AQ as well as all your weak acids or weak bases. So all of these are aqueous and they're going to be in the formula. Remember, only aqueous or gases are allowed in any K value. Now, when they ask us to find all the concentration of all solute species, they're secretly asking for equilibrium concentration values. This value that they gave us, the 0 0.0810 molar solution, was what you started with, right? The initial concentrations. So this was what we started with. And any time that they give you initial concentrations and they're asking for equilibrium, you got to draw a nice table. So I'm going to say ICE. We saw these in the equilibrium chapter, chapter 13. So they're coming back. We love them. Well, Maybe only one person, myself. <laughs> but anyway, we got to do them, right? So I stands for initial. They did tell us that the 0 0.0810 molarity was going towards the HCN. So that's what I'm going to put here, 0 0.0810. Now, they didn't tell us what we started with with H plus or CN minus. There's no other value here. So I have to assume that I didn't start with anything. So 0 and 0. C stands for the change in concentration from the initial. But you can't, you know, lose anything that you don't have. If you don't have anything, you can't lose more in terms of, you know, chemistry. So there's no such thing as negative molarities. So if you started off with nothing, you could only go up from there. So I can say that this has to be a plus, this has to be a plus, and on the other side, this would be the subtraction. Now, we don't know what the change is, so generally we pick a variable, we're going to pick x, right? So we'll say minus x, plus x, and plus x. And with acids and bases, since they're always a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio, you don't worry about minus 2x or minus 3x, it's all going to be 1 to 1 to 1. E is the equilibrium, so that's what we basically want. We want equilibrium, and that's always the initial with the change. So you're just basically bringing them together. So 0 0.0810 minus x would be 0 0.0810 minus x. 0 plus x is just x. 0 plus x is just x. Now we have my equilibrium line to put together with the k values, right? Using a k equ equation. And remember, ka, kb, kc, kp, whatever k you're using is always products divided by reactants. So in this case... Ka would equal something divided by something. And we have the three things. Remember, if you have multiple products, they're multiplied by each other. They're not added. So this would be H plus times Cn minus divided by HCn. Maybe I'll pull this over a little bit. Hold on. There we go. Now, they did say that we're going to neglect the change in the initial concentration. 
the change in the initial concentration. We're only talking about this one right here. Basically, since this Ka value is so small, it's 10 to the negative 10th, that means that whatever you started with, you're probably going to end with a very, very, very close number to that. Your reactants basically are going to stay that way at equilibrium, which means that this minus x is so, so, so small that you're not even going to change the needle on the numbers. So essentially, for math purposes, we can neglect that minus x. However, we can't neglect these x's because then we won't have a variable. So we got to keep these and get rid of the minus x. Okay, so now Ka was 4.9, and maybe what I'll do is 4.9 times 10 to the negative 10th equals... We'll do two values up top, divided by the one value down below. We have x times x, divided by 0 0.0810. We can use cross multiplication to try to get x by itself. Write this times this. So maybe I'll move, uh, actually, I think if I just move this a little bit over, I think I'm good. x squared equals... 4.9 times 10 to the negative 10th times 0 0.0810. And I'm not going to round it because that's not my final answer. So 3.969 times 10 to the negative 11th. I want to square root this because I want to get x by itself. And now I'm going to round it off to three sig figs, so technically the, this would be 6.30 times 10 to the negative sixth. And that's all of the x values. So x equals, that's the x for h plus, and that's the x for cn minus. So we already know that the h plus concentration, the hydronium, is 6.30 times 10 to the negative six molarity. We know that the Cn minus is also the same, 6.30 times 10 to the negative 6 molarity. And now for the 8Cn, now you incorporate back that minus x. So this would essentially be 0 0.0810 minus 6.30 times 10 to the negative 6. So I'm going to do that in my calci. And I get 0 0.0810 minus... 6.3 times 10 to the negative 6. And if I just bring this number out, 0 0.08099, I mean, it's very, very, very close to 0 0.08110. Right? We can kind of see that. So that's why you can neglect it as far as math-wise, because the number is not going to change. Now, we did all these three concentrations, but they said that we need to find the concentration of all solute species. And here's the trick, guys. If you have H+, you secretly have some OH- because of the formula Kw equals H+, times OH-. So, we're going to use this formula to solve for the OH- that's a little bit in solution. If I just rearrange this formula, if I want to solve for OH minus, I would divide H plus on both sides. So it'd be Kw divided by H plus. Whoop, what's going on here? Hold on. H plus, and that would equal the OH minus concentration. Kw is a uh, variable that not a variable. It's a constant number, especially if we're using Ka values from the back of a textbook. That's 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. And we just found out that the H plus concentration was 6.30 times 10 to the negative 6. So we could solve, right? So something divided by something equals the OH minus concentration, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 6.30 times 10 to the negative 6. And my answer would go right over here, OH minus equals. Let's see. 
1 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 6.3 times 10 to the negative 6. And I guess 3 sig figs, so 1.59 times 10 to the negative 9th. And you have way more H plus concentration than OH minus, which also is telling you that this is an acid. Okay, so these are your answers, your four answers. Oh yeah, that's all the solute species. And that's it. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And I hope you guys are having a great day out there. Let's keep studying hard. Good luck on your future tests and quizzes. And I'll see you all later. Okay, bye-bye.